grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Though people may be joining us from many regions, we acknowledge that the Church of St. Stephen in the Fields stands on occupied land, the traditional territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit and Anishinaabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Wendat and Petun nations, land covered by the dish with one spoon wampum belt covenant. Treaty 13 and the Williams Treaty are also relevant to this territory. We acknowledge that we have broken the treaties. We acknowledge the damage done by colonialism and the role that our church has played in this and we pledge ourselves to work for a future of justice and reconciliation. Alleluia, sing to Jesus, he is the scepter, he is the throne. Alleluia, he is the triumph, he is the victory. Every 
of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy, welcoming sinners and inviting us to this table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace. Peace, everyone. Peace. Peace, everyone. Peace, everyone. Peace, everyone. Glory to God in the highest. And peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you 
for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayers. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. <coughs> Excuse me. Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, your Son Jesus Christ has left to us this meal of bread and wine in which we share his body and his blood. May we who celebrate this sign of his great love show in our lives the fruits of his redemption. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book Deuteronomy. Remember the long way that the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness in order to humble you, testing you to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commandments. He humbled you by letting you hunger, then feeding you with manna, with which neither you nor your ancestors were acquainted, in order to make you understand that one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Then, do not exalt yourself, forgetting the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness, an arid wasteland with poisonous snakes and scorpions. He made water flow for you from flint rock, and fed you in the wilderness with manna that your ancestors did not know, to humble you and to test you, and in the end, to do you good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. But the Lord has pleasure in those who fear him, in those who await his gracious favor. Worship the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed your children within you. He has established peace on your border. He satisfies you with the finest He sends forth his word and melts them. He blows with his wind and the waters flow. He declares his word to Jacob. His statutes and his judgments to Israel.
A reading from the first letter to the Corinthians. The cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a sharing in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a sharing in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven not like that which your ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. In Paul's letters, which are really the earliest Christian writings that we have, even earlier than Mark's Gospel, although there is much discussion of what Jesus means to us, there is only one story told about him. Remarkably, it is not the story of any of his miracles, or of his crucifixion, or any of the resurrection appearances. It is the story we just heard that at dinner with his friends he took bread and declared it to be his body, took wine and declared it to be his blood, and instructed the church to do likewise. And this we have done ever since. It has been done in caves and in homes and in cathedrals and in every kind of gathering place. It has been done in hiding, sometimes alone, 
And for the last three years, in perhaps the strangest adaptation yet, it has been widely done on Zoom calls. We continued to celebrate the Eucharist even when we were the most physically separated, because it continued to be our sign and our tether, the recreation of the story which our flesh inherits, under whatever conditions it is offered. This thing that the Church has done from the earliest time we can document, has done at all times and in all places, in every kind of style and form, that thing we are commanded to do however we are able. It is our great thanksgiving, no matter what. It is that movement towards the center of creation, which is the offering of ourselves, our souls and bodies which is the making of our own bodies into bread for the world. Even when only one of us could touch the bread, still we were all as community, lifting up creation as a gift from and to the creator of all things. And so we are now. We are given bread as the means to encounter God because we understand the body's hunger because we must all eat. Because at some point we will all, even those of us with privilege, know what it is like to lack food, at least briefly, and need it. And in that lack we will find our way to God if we can only let hunger teach us. We are given the body because the body is what we all share, because beyond any counting of skill or strength or merit, we are all these bodies. It is one of these bodies which the Word was pleased to become. And the real presence of Christ in the bread and the wine means as well the real presence of Christ in our own flesh and our own blood, in our producing and consuming and sharing of food and drink, each one of us a Corpus Christi, made so at creation, declared so in our baptism. But if each of us is a Corpus Christi, then the Corpus Christi, the body of Christ, is also all of us. It may be the most important metaphor in our tradition, for it speaks of our simultaneous diversity and interdependence, the inability for any of us to exist fully without the other, the suffering of every body as the suffering of Christ. In each murdered child or broken spirit in the residential schools, the church was once again crucifying the lamb. Each essential worker in Brampton struggling for breath in intensive care during the Delta wave. Each trans person, each queer person insisting on the truth of their bodies and their beings increasingly persecuted by forces of hate and the forces of hate using the forces of law. Each is part of the body of Christ, part of our own body. The body of the earth, burning with the results of corporate greed, is Christ's own suffering body. This feast, as I've observed before, is the only one known to have been added to the church calendar through the efforts of a woman, the nun and scholar Juliana of Liege, during a time when women in particular were fostering an intense devotion to the Eucharist as Christ's body in a very vivid way, including visions of bleeding hosts. It is strange to us now, but there was something very radical going on there. Western thought, developing out of Greco-Roman ideas mostly, and in fact many other cultures around the world, have traditionally assigned those bodies identified as female to the category of matter, of flesh, of physicality, and has been deeply dubious about that physicality, while those bodies identified as male are assigned to the categories of mind, intellect, spirit, and valued more highly because of that. Both this gendered assignment of qualities and the ranking of spirit as intrinsically better than flesh are fundamentally Gnostic ideas and ought to be no part of Christianity, but of course they have been very deeply part of our thought for a long time. 
So for these medieval women in a patriarchal society to insist upon the flesh and the blood, the overt physicality of Christ, to return to the absolutely literal imagery of the exodus and the blood thrown upon the people to bind them to their God. It is a means for them to reinsert themselves into the narrative of salvation. And it is even more than that to point towards the Jesus who, in a body identified as male, takes on the work of women, washing and nursing and feeding, takes on a permeable and bleeding body, a killable body, a body considered expendable by power, and a body which, in and of itself, is our food and our life. A body which confounds not only our binary categories of gender, but our limited ideas about the distinction between body and spirit, between ordinary matter and the unnameable God, between what is powerful and what is vulnerable. The Incarnation tells us, and the Eucharist tells us, that God is not in some special spiritual place, bright and pure and different, but here in this ambiguous earth, in blood and dirt, in our eating and drinking, in the confusions and beauties of our flesh, even in the frustrating limits of the body, sickness and age, the stuff of it all. In the wilderness of this world, God comes to bodies as food, and the meaning of this is first and foremost literal food. We need to remember that before Jesus talked about himself as the bread of life, he fed a hungry crowd out in the hot sun with real physical bread. The women of medieval Europe understood bread and blood and hunger, understood the needs of the body, were involved in the care and feeding of vulnerable bodies every day. Many of them, lay and religious, were working in urban centers in the emerging merchant economy with the casualties of that emergence, the desperately poor and ill. Their stubbornly physical visions of the incarnate God bleeding in bread put this experience in front of the eyes of those in the church who might have been able to forget it. And if we are to encounter this same God, we too must remember the body first our own bodies and the bodies of the world, struggling, beautiful, fighting for their truth or buried in unmarked graves, all of the bodies. And so we do this thing and must do it still. So we must let ourselves be made and remade into the image of God, redeemed by the body which died and rose, bonded by blood, bound to the world, to the bread, to the work in all its forms. Some of us, at least, can come forward as community and take the bread and wine. We can kneel together. And all of us recognize bread and blood and hunger. And we try to understand that even here, even now, we are offered life and given the strength to offer in return. Amen. Let us confess our faith as we say. We believe in one God the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. 
On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church with the Father. We believe in one holy and spirit. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Remembering Christ as an embodied being, born into history in a colonized land, in a body that hungered and sweat, storyteller, teacher, and friend to the outsider. To the petition, Incarnate Love, I invite you to respond, bring us together. Bring us together. We pray today in the worldwide Anglican cycle of prayer for the Diocese of Texas in the Episcopal Church. Your prayers are asked in the Anglican Church of Canada for the Most Reverend Gregory Kerr Wilson, Metropolitan, and the clergy and people of the ecclesiastical province of Rupert's Land. In the, in the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada and in the Anglican Church of Canada for Lutheran and Anglican global partners and companions. Incarnate love. Bring us together. In our diocesan prayer cycle, we pray for St. John Blackstock, Cartwright, amalgamated 2016. In our diocesan social justice and advocacy cycle, we pray for St. John the Evangelist, Port Hope, its secondhand shop, its spiritual and community garden, it, and its support of food banks and other community supports. For St. John Bowmanville, its community garden, Christmas hamper program, and support of the Dur Durham Region Migrant Worker Ministry and for St. John each East Orangeville, its community meals and other local community supports. Incarnate love, bring us together. In our parish family, we pray for Elizabeth Cummings and Tucker Knight, Compton Downs, Joy Duran, Olivia Duizak, Zewa, Sue Ann Elite, Maria Erskine and Hugh Thomas, Monica Facchiesi, Andre Forger, Hugh Goldring and Nicole Burton and Felix, Tucker Gordon, Peter Hare Snape and Ken Peters, Margaret Harry. Incarnate love, bring us together. Remember in your prayers those who are sick or in special need. Vanessa, Becky, Tasia, Beck, Lavina, Michael, Victor, Leone, Dave, Sue Ann, Terry, Jean, Alicia, Georgina, Andy Alley, Maria, Cheryl, Emily, Rena, Laura, Shirley, Catherine, Jose and Joanne, Brianna, Bodie, Jane, Kim, Liam and family, Joe, Parisa, Magdalena, Tucker, Bill and Suzanne, Diane, Jacobus, Yvonne, Suzanne, Martin, Jamie Lynn and John. Incarnate love, bring us together. Remember in your prayers all those who have died in recent days and all whose anniversary of death occurs around this time. This week we especially remember Ashton Gray. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord. 
and may light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. Creator of love and peace, feed our hope. Remind us of your light within each of us and the delight you take in our differences and diversity. Grant us holy pride in the gifts we have to offer the world. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we spread this table to remember the loving sacrifice of Jesus Christ, your Son. Accept all we offer you today. Bind us together in his love and in the love he has commanded us to bring one another through Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. 
power and might have none doth are full of your glory O Sana in the highest O Sana in the highest Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Zana in the highest. O Zana in the highest. We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted. Our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice that we, made acceptable in him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new and bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your children. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us.
us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Now and forever. Amen. I am the bread of life, which has come down from heaven, says the Lord. Give us this bread forever. I am the vine, you are the branches. May we dwell in him as he lives in us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace, grant us peace.
Let us pray. God of peace, you have nourished us in your sacrament with the body and blood of Christ. May we who have taken holy things keep faith in our hearts and lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of God which passes understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Thanks be to God. And thank you, everyone. Um, our My first announcement is that uh, tomorrow morning at 10.30 a.m. in the church, the Reverend Max Price will celebrate his first Mass as an Anglican priest. Um, we had a lovely service earlier today. I hope that uh, 
if any of you are able to make it tomorrow morning, that you will do so. And uh, those of you who can't, we will know that uh, your prayers are with Max and with us all. Uh, our schedule for the week is fairly much as usual. We will have evening prayer Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at 5 p.m. Uh, Bible study and meditation on Zoom Tuesday night at 7.30. Uh, noon mass in the side chapel uh, on Wednesday. We have our next vaccine clinic also on Tuesday from 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. with uh, bivalent COVID boosters for anyone who is eligible, a uh, low barrier community clinic. Um, if you know of anyone, please uh, urge them to, to show up. Uh, Pride week is, well, we are in Pride month and Pride week, the week of the big parades is coming up. The Trans March will be Friday, June 23rd and Trans Anglicans will be in the March. Um, we'll be gathering We'll be gathering on Church Street. Um, the precise details are in the e-newsletter. Um, if anyone is interested in helping to carry the St. Stephen's banner, uh, please let me know because um, I will not be able to be there because I have to be at the drop-in on Friday nights, um, which I regret very much. Uh, Proud Anglicans will also be in the, the Big Pride March on Sunday and we'll get details about the staging area if past form serves, we'll get details about the staging area a few days beforehand. But again, anyone who wants to attend and wants to help to carry the St. Stephen's banner, uh, let me know. Um, I think those are all the major upcoming events that I need to announce at this point. Um, uh, some of us, the people who work in the uh, drop at the drop-in in particular, uh, may remember Ashton Gray. He, he did also attend one of our services fairly recently um, and was a vivid presence, as he always was. Um, his funeral will be at the Rosar Morrison Funeral Home on Tuesday, June 20th. Um, I may be officiating at that funeral. I, I'm still waiting to hear from the family. I think that is uh, all that we have to announce for now, and Adonica is still off on her exciting travels. I believe she's in Peterborough by now. Um, so I will just urge everyone to stay on after the postlude and uh, join us for an informal period of chat. Thank you all. Thank you.